located at the southwest corner of Santa Fe Drive and Highway C-470, lies one of Littleton's most colorful and infamous parcels of land. U.S. Senator Edward Wolcott purchased the 410-acre ranch in northern Douglas County in 1888. Soon after, he bought 230 adjoining acres just north of the ranch in southern Arapaho County. It was there that he built a sprawling Tudor mansion and appropriately named it Woolhurst. Senator Wolcott was one of Colorado's most influential Republicans during the early days of statehood. In August 1898, he hosted a benefit for Spanish-American war veterans that attracted nearly 10,000 people to the estate. The extravagant carnival-like event featured a candy booth decorated as a battleship, military bands, a geisha tea house, Turkish tents, vaudeville acts, fortune-telling, and much more. The greatest spectacle of the day was a mock battlefield where Denver's 15th Infantry routed a much larger Spanish army. After Wolcott's death in 1905, the property was purchased by Thomas Walsh, who made his fortune when he discovered gold at the Camp Bird Mine, six miles southwest of Uray, Colorado. Walsh, who had ambitions to be a Republican senator, hosted a breakfast for then Secretary of War William Howard Taft in 1907. During one of his later visits as President of the United States, Woolhurst was renamed Clonmel and christened by Taft with a small silver hammer. The Walsh family is perhaps best known for its association with the curse of the Hope Diamond. In 1911, Thomas Walsh purchased the diamond for his beloved daughter, Evelyn Walsh McLean, who held on to it until her death in 1947. According to legend, Walsh McLean was so proud of the diamond, she affixed it to her dog's collar. But owning the diamond came at a steep price. First, her mother-in-law died. Her son died at the age of nine. Her husband left her for another woman and later died in a mental hospital. And finally, her daughter died of a drug overdose at the age of 25. The legendary Hope Diamond is now housed at the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. In 1910, Woolhurst entered a quiet period when Horace Bennett bought the estate as a summer home. This peaceful era ended in 1944 when Bennett's widow sold Woolhurst to a shady character named Ova Elijah Smiling Charlie Stevens. Stevens was a well-known ex-convict and reputed gambling figure who promptly converted the property to the Woolhurst Saddle Club. Guests who were previously welcomed by smiling maids and butlers were now greeted by steely-eyed gangsters who peered at each new guest suspiciously through the front door's peephole. Visitors were carefully scrutinized now that Smiling Charlie's Club catered to Denver's elite as a speakeasy and a casino. The casino was connected to the Arapahoe County Manor House by an underground tunnel. The passageway was used by gamblers to flee from Arapahoe County and into Douglas County, or vice versa, where each county sheriff had no jurisdiction. On March 10, 1946, 13 armed bandits raided the club and, according to the Rocky Mountain News, escaped with $75,000 in gambling money and another $75,000 in jewelry and cash. The Woolhurst Saddle Club was padlocked for a year, pending an investigation. The controversial case that ensued ended with a conviction for Smiling Charlie and his partner Edward Jordan in 1947. They were fined $1,000 each. The robbery was never solved, but authorities believe that the gunmen were gangsters from Kansas City and Denver. In 1950, Edward Jordan purchased Smiling Charlie's stake in the Woolhurst Saddle Club and reopened it as a restaurant and nightclub. Bad luck hit again in February 1951 when much of the old manor house was destroyed by fire. A cook and dishwasher were found dead in the aftermath. Not one to be deterred, Jordan rebuilt and reopened the restaurant and nightclub. The club hosted many nationally known entertainers including Rowan and Martin of Laugh-In fame. 
In May of 1958, 14 guests were arrested in a gambling raid. The Woolhurst Club and the state of Colorado soon signed a no gambling pact for one year. The judge who signed the order called the agreement an unusual procedure. Luckily for Jordan, the agreement was signed shortly before a court hearing where the state was determined to close the club. In 1971, Edward Jordan sold the Woolhurst Club to Kodeka Corporation. Kodeka developed the area around the manor house into a mobile home park. On March 29, 1976, the Woolhurst Manor House burned down for the final time. The cause of the fire remains unknown to this day. The curse of the Hope Diamond? <laughs> you decide. The area that was once home to a sprawling mansion with an illustrious history is now home to the Woolhurst Mobile Home Community.